Hello Viking Sports followers, uh, today we've got another interview in a very busy week uh, of interviews that we have got here to this week and um, we've got nine in total mixed between snooker and boxing um, but today we've got something a little bit different um, which is we will be interviewing MC Phil Seymour um, which is a great honour um, to, to get some insight on MCing and what he's done in his career so we'll get him in shortly. Um, so any questions, obviously, we've got, so we'll try and get through through them as many as we can. So I'll just get him in now. So I've just sent him an invite, so he should be with us shortly, um, and then we can get started. Hello, Phil, you okay? Yeah, very good. Thanks, yourself? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Are you the in the bubble? I'm doing Instagram Live, so this is... is uh, Weird for me. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you in the in the bubble at MK Dons? No, I'm not actually. I'm I'm elsewhere. I've um, I've been tested and I'm, I'm yeah. somewhere else. So I'm uh, I'm sort of isolated away, but not in Milton yeah. Keynes. Yeah. And w when is it that you you start? Because obviously the Northern Ireland Open starts tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it started today. Oh, did uh, it? Yeah, yeah. Started earlier on today. Judd, Judd Trump's already through to the next round. Um, yeah. So that started today. I get there Thursday night to announce from Friday, from quarterfinal stage. Yeah. So I do quarterfinals, semifinals, and final on Sunday, um, and then on. So yeah, it's uh, be a great week. Yeah, definitely. So reason for getting you on is obviously you're an MC and uh, for the snooker, and also a licensed uh, boxing MC as well. Um, so it kind of ties into what we're we're doing at the moment on our page. So. Really just wanted to start off with getting a bit of background in, in how you, you started off, really, in your career. Mine was a weird one. Um, massive sports fan. Always been a sports fan. Um, but rugby was, was really my sport. Hey, Ryan. Um, rugby was really my sport. I used to coach the, the juniors at York, at York City United Rugby League. And then on match day, for the first team, I'd just do whatever we needed. So if we needed someone to do a turnstile, do a turnstile. If we needed someone to do a car park, I could do a car park. I was even the mascot in the big suit one time. Oh. Um, and then one week, the stadium announcer couldn't couldn't make it. He was, yeah, I think he had a back operation or something. So no one else really wanted to do it. So I said, I'll fill in. And it turned out I was quite good at it. So I ended up sort of doing that. The chairman said, look, this is your job, Phil. This is what you do now. So I ended up doing that for quite a few years, just as a volunteer. And then one of our ex-players went over to Wakefield Trinity in Super League. Um, he ended up as a director there. He again rang me up, Phil, our stadium announcer can't do a couple of games. Can you come and fill in? I said, mm, I don't know. It's a long way away, blah, blah. Look, yeah. we'll pay you to do it. I said, yep, no problem, I'm there. <laughs> um, yeah, went across. I've been there for 11 years now. I've been at Wakefield Stadium announcing for 11 years, which is brilliant. Um, you know, it's, I, I love the place. It's, I'm sort of <laughs> paranoid about the furniture then. <laughs> <laughs> so... I've gone on to do everything else. So I've done uh, international rugby league. I've done the last rugby, world, rugby league World Cup that was in this country. Um, I did the Four Nations, so Australia, New Zealand, England, Scotland, which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then everything else kind of came off the back of the rugby, really. Um, yeah. You know, boxing was a sport I'd always loved watching. I'd always been a huge fan. I mean, I'd, I was there as a fan when, when Ricky Hatton fought Costas You in Manchester. Yeah. You know, I'm a boxing fan. I always have been. Yeah. And then, yes, yeah, so the, bo uh, the boxing came. Someone suggested that I did the boxing. A guy from Sky suggested that. Um, got licensed to do professional boxing. And uh, everything's just sort of stemmed on from yeah. there. Great. And um, with the boxing, obviously, it's, it's very different to any other MC work because you have to have the license. So how, how was it that you, you managed to obtain the license? And what, what do you need to do to obtain that? Yeah, I, I didn't realise this, actually. Um, yeah. the reason I it was a Sky producer it's a Super League match who said to me he said look with your voice Phil you should really do the boxing it's, it got me thinking and um, mm -hmm. a, a little while later it was my 35th birthday and I'd had a few a few beers <laughs> and um, I declared that I was going to bring an ounce of boxing world title fight before I was 40 so five years time and people like that are you stupid blah, blah. you need to be licensed I said oh, I didn't know you had to get a licence so a friend of mine who is a, a boxing manager, a professional boxing manager, he put me in touch with the right people. Um, I did a couple of uh, like cage fighting uh, and tie boxing shows to get some experience. Okay. 
and then I got a point with the board to go and get a license, got my license, um, and I did my first world title fight two and a half years later. Wow. So it, it took me two and a half years to fulfill my five year goal, really, which was yeah. amazing, to be honest. It's great. And, and is that something that you have to upkeep the license, or, or is it something that maintains in place? You, you have to pay for it every year. It, yeah. there's a, every year. Um, but the, the main thing is that you keep your performances. I think if you, if you do the wrong things, they, they, you know, they won't, won't renew it, really. So um, it means you have unlicensed boxing and things like that. Um, yeah. Doing a lot of things. You know, I did the wrestling for ITV, that kind of thing. That's all okay. It, but it's yeah. actual boxing is the, the thing. So um, you can only do licensed boxing shows. Yeah, and obviously you're linked to MTK Global. Um, obviously, they're, they're putting on some fantastic shows of, of recent. Um, have you got any any coming up? Any shows that you've got? Yeah, I've got a great one. Um, first week in December, I think it's the second or third of December, uh, live on Sky Sports. Yeah. Got two of the Golden Contract finals. Um, wow. Jazz Day, Liam Walsh, which was, it should have happened on the last the last Sky show that we did, but unfortunately... Um, Jazza and his, his coach Derry Matthews both tested positive for COVID, so that had to be, they were taken out of the bubble. So we've got that, and we've also got um, Sergey Mikel against Belotniks, which will yeah. be explosive, light heavyweight, yeah. golden contracts. There's a lot of money, on, you know, it's, there's like half a million pounds minimum, I think, on the line for this. So they are huge fights, and yeah, that shot is that, is that the second or third of December? Well, I think it's the second of December. Yeah. Um, that will be superb. Live on Sky Sports and uh, yeah, watch that. It will be a cracking yeah. show. Harlem Eubanks fighting on it as well in a, a really tough fight. So yeah, yeah, well worth a watch. Yeah, definitely. So with regards to the MTK, obviously, you know, you've got your license, you're, you're a boxing announcer. How did that, that come about? Because obviously they've started to grow quite big mm. and quickly over the last couple of years. Yeah. It's, it's a weird one. They, uh, they, they, they had an announcer called Terry who's Irish. Um, and he, he sort of would fly around do their shows and then obviously lockdown happened these shows that they've been doing post lockdown are all near Wakefield so oh. I live in York um, I know the promoter Lee anyway just through through boxing circles and we've met several times with quite good friends <laughs> he came to me and he said look you know you, you're only down the road it, it seems mad to fly Terry in for these ones yeah. you know everything that's going on um, could you do them? And of course, absolutely. Um, you know, it's firstly that they're great shows. They are yeah. really, really good shows. I mean, it's, you know, they've had so many winning record against winning record. There's no, there's no, no easy fights at all on these shows. So yeah. they're really, really good shows to be emceeing. But they're a great organisation as well. You know, they look after me really well. They, they're really good guys, and um, it's great to be working. A, a lot of guys, <laughs> my position in my role. You know, yeah. so I'm I'm really looking to which that carries on. Yeah, no, definitely, and obviously they got some big fighter links with like sponsorship deals. You know, Tyson Fury being one of them. You know, the ones that I can can reel off at the moment. But yeah, they're definitely up and coming, and you know they've they've got links to to one of the biggest you know boxing you know interview uh, shows that are out there, IFL TV, which is you know phenomenal to have you know all of those links in one place. So I think they'll they'll continue to grow, which is good. So obviously you're also emceeing snooker, and obviously you know we've seen you a couple of times live as well. So what was the the draw into that? Was it again the Sky Link, or or was there something else that brought brought that in? The matchrooms, the Hearns, really. Yeah, uh, I've done over the years. I've done quite quite a lot of stuff for them. I've worked on the the pool, um, Fishermania as well. Um, I do every year on Sky. Not this year because it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, I've done boxing for, for Matchroom as well. And it, John McDonald, who does the darts, again, PDC, which is um, Barry Hearn is the, the head yeah. one. Um, John also used to do the snooker as well and the boxing. And it was a case that if there was something he couldn't do, then they, they would pull me in. So Fishermania, one, one year <coughs> couldn't do it because he had to do some boxing, so they pulled me in to do Fishermania. I've stood in for John at the darts quite a few times. And then the snooker, John used to do all of that. And then I started getting pulled in for the odd day. Um, and I, I don't know sort of what was, what was decided really. But I think they just, they wanted people to do whole tournaments. Yeah. Uh, I could, I could do that. So it was, it spurred me on really. Cause I, I'd always worked alongside the announcing. So I'd always had a full-time job. Yeah. 
snooker really gave me that impetus to to step away from that and and push on and go full time doing doing what I do. And uh, yeah, I love it. It's, it's fun. Yeah. And uh, what's the, the biggest like snooker event that you've been part of that that just sticks in, in your brain? Um, that's the most memorable thing uh, that you know for snooker that you've you've ever been a part of. You know, there's been a lot. I mean, I've, I filled in at the Crucible at the World Championships. It was just yeah. that whole venue is amazing because it's a theatre. It's yeah. not, it's not an arena. It's it's completely different. It makes the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. Yeah. Um, but I was. There's, there's been quite a few great matches. Last year's Champion of Champions final, um, Judd Trump Neil Robertson. Yeah. Certainly the best match I've ever seen live. Um, a lot of people say it's, it's the best match of snooker there's ever been. It, the, yeah. the standard of snooker in that match was phenomenal. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Neil Robertson won. He's, he's a great guy, Neil. And um, yeah, that, that was fantastic. But also I was on the microphone when Ronnie O'Sullivan got his thousandth century. Yeah. A really, really special night. I mean, yeah. that was amazing. Again, he was playing Neil Robertson. Um, final of the players championship I think in Preston I think it was and that was just the roof came off you know the atmosphere in that place was just ridiculous it was the final frame of the match um, and it, there was a really funny thing at the end of it as well because obviously he, he'd made the century and, and everyone just went crazy and he spoke to the crowd about all this but right at the end of the break I think he potted the black but I think the white ball went all around the table and then went into the middle pocket in doing so it stopped him taking the highest break prize. Yeah. <laughs> if, it, if that would have been the highest break. As it is, Neil Robertson, who lost the match, sat in the other chair, won the highest break prize. So yeah. Ronnie sort of got off from the table, give it this. Neil came across to him and went, You just got me five grand. <laughs> you just got me five grand there. And it was a real funny moment because I don't think that, that many people knew. Yeah. Gone on. But obviously, we're watching thinking, He's just blown the highest break. And yeah, Rob would noticed it as well. So that was, yeah, that was a, a funny moment. But yeah, there's been some great times like that. And I'm lucky I get to interview the players for World Snooker after um, after the matches as well. So I love that side of it because you, you can get to know them a bit and sort of really share some of their relation at their wins as well, which is yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. And touching on that with regards to the interviews that you do, um, obviously after, um, what's been the most memorable interview that you've you've done um in the snooker well we had i mean we had ronnie o'sullivan doing all his australian accents which is <laughs> that was yeah that was different level last year um just yeah probably some of those to be honest um we have a laugh as well we, we do some like daft quizzes with them and things like that which are always good fun um but it's really it's really interesting because a lot of the players you don't get to that level without being really really competitive yeah a lot of them are, are uber competitive. Mark Selby in particular. You know, we had a daft um, European Capital Cities quiz at the European <coughs> a couple of months ago. And he would not let it go. He lost by one point. He's like, well, what, what, what questions did he do? What questions? Did... Give me his questions. See how I'd get on those. And you're like, Mark, seriously. Yeah. Drop. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I used to, I did a sports radio show on a stage called Radio Yorkshire quite a few years ago now. And on there we had, you know, interviewed Eddie Hearn in the studio for an hour. We had Tyson Fury on the on the phone, but also I had Tony Bellew on the week after he won the world title. Wow. Uh, um, Macabu or Macabu. But it was the day that Muhammad Ali died. Wow. Uh, just I, I was driving into the station. It came on the radio. Muhammad Ali's passed away, and I had Tony Bellew literally as my first guest on. Yeah. You know that was that was quite an interesting one, really, to hear him speak raw. Yeah, um, about that was, and it was a week after he won a world title, so he was still on a high as well. It was, it was just a very interesting interview, I I found personally. Yeah, no, it would have been interesting to obviously just, you know, as you said, he's come off a high, winning the title, and then obviously the the devastating news that Muhammad Ali had passed. It's, it would have been difficult for him, but for you as a you know a presenter and interviewing him, it must have been so difficult to kind of judge you know what what to say and and, and him as a person and this this i think if you you know you just do things with decency and, and honesty really and i think if you do that you don't go far wrong um yeah. like i said I'm, I'm a massive sports fan myself so when things like that happen it's 
you know, it, it gets me as much as it gets anyone else. So um, I think if you, when you, especially when you're interviewing people, and I'm, I'm doing the announcing as well to an extent, when you're a big sports fan yourself, you do things the way that you'd want to see them done. Yeah. Uh, that's all I've ever done, you know, in the boxing. I watch boxing and, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I used to watch the announcer and think, mm, he's not really put his back into that or he's not done this, he's not done that. And I, I like to think anyway that I try and do it the way that I'd like to see it done. Yeah. And is there uh, an MC out there that you really look up to, um, not necessarily, uh, you know, use their techniques, but put something on a little bit of a spin on, on what they do? Um. Yeah, I want to put a spin on them. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Um, it's Showtime over in America. Yeah. Jimmy, when I first started out, he was really kind to me over Twitter. Um, messaged me a few times with, with support, as Michael Buffer has as well. Um, you know, and Jimmy's he's the class he's known as, and he, he is. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a really good guy. Plays everything with a straight bat. He doesn't ham things up particularly. He just he does he does everything very very yeah. well. Um, you look in in this country. As I said, John McDonald, I mean, John, John's great. He, really, really nice guy and a very, very, very good announcer. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the likes of Craig Stephen as well. Craig's a very good friend of mine. Um, really, really good guy. Um, you know, and there's quite a few of us who are, who are mates who we yeah. chat regularly and we all got on very well. Um, and I think that's important to, to have people in the same position as you. So then, you know, we, we critique each other, don't get me wrong. If if one of us doesn't do so well, we let let the other one know. And, yeah. uh, you know, if, but we'll also, you know, say, you know, you've done well. You, yeah. you've done it. And it's always good to hear, really, because it's, people don't watch us. You know, we're, we're not there to be watched, really. We're just there to, to get the boxes out or get the players out or, or whatever. But other MCs notice what other MCs do. Yeah. So if an MC makes an error, it'll often go, unseen really but I'll notice it or if I make an other MC you know they'll I'll get a message from someone saying uh, did you forget that there it's like yeah I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have that though it's good to have yeah. the same thing I think yeah definitely so with regards to obviously you know it's the tail end of the year obviously it's it, sports being jammed in just obviously with covid it's it's really put the sporting schedule so far behind and everything's trying to be ca you know catched up at the moment and and obviously there's a lot of events um now and and still you know in january so what what have you you got coming up and and what are you a, a part of obviously we touched on the northern ireland and obviously the upcoming uh, golden contracts have you yeah, got any others booked in yeah we've got northern ireland this week golden contract first week of december um and then there's the scottish open yeah uh, which is mid-December. Um, I'll be there for the last three days of that. And then the day after that finishes, we've got the World Grand Prix, which is normally in Cheltenham. In, yeah. But they've pulled that forward, so that's in December now. So um, that finishes, I think, about the 20th. It's just before right. Christmas. Anyway. So, yeah, I've got three days at the Scottish Open, and then we stay there, basically, to do the World Grand Prix. So um, it's a bit weird, Northern Ireland Open, the Scottish Open in Milton yeah. Keynes. Hey, it's, it's how it is. And the, the job that World Snooker Tour have done to, to get snooker to carry on. I mean, I think it was the first professional sport back. Yeah. And the way they've done it, um, Neil Robertson, I interviewed him last, last month, the last tournament. And he said to me, he said, not necessarily him, because he's, he's all right. You know, he's yeah. a very, very good living. But some of the, the lower ranked players who, who almost live hand to mouth, you know, they, they make the money tournament to tournament. The fact that there's... There's tournaments on for them to be able to earn money is is phenomenal, really. And you know, the hell of work behind the scenes by the, the team of World Snooker Tour to to make that happen. Similar to the boxing as well. You know, it's who who would think that boxing could go on without a crowd? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of boxing that isn't going on. So those that are managing to put it on really do need a big pat on the back. The same as World Snooker Tour do as well because they they are really doing great things at the moment. Yeah, no, the arena, the Marshall Arena is just, it's a phenomenal setup, you know, mm -hmm. from, from our, our perspective as fans, but also the players have said, you know, it's just amazing to play in. Obviously, we had Stuart Bingham on um, last week and he said, you know, it, it is fantastic. However, those kind of adrenaline moments and, you know, that, that get you through with a difficult shot, you know, the fans are behind you, whereas they don't have that. And it's more like a practice it's match, this game. It, it is weird. I mean, from my perspective, 
And I always say that the MC job really is it's like an iceberg. What you see on TV is the tip. Yeah. There's everything underneath that you don't see. And, you know, I, I normally spend sort of 20 minutes warming the crowd up, talking to the crowd before we, before we go live, making sure they clap you at the right places and they're all enjoying themselves and, and everything else. Obviously, there's none of that. So that's, yeah. it's really weird that you, you're sort of going into these things cold, as it were. Um, but it, it is great. And, you know, the, the, the testing's all in place. It's as, as safe and secure as it can be. Um, yeah. I don't think any, anything's 100% safe nowadays, but it's as good as it can be, definitely. Yeah. Stuart Bingham, though, Stuart, we, um, I announced the English Open. He, he, he yeah. won the English Open a few years ago. And he played Mark Davis in the final. Well, those two are best mates. And it was Mark's first ranking event final, having been a pro for like 20 years or so. And they were on the practice tables. And the practice tables were right next to each other before they yeah. went out. And I, I had to walk through the practice room. And they were, more often than not, the players will practice, but literally completely ignore the fact the yeah. other person yeah they're, they're in their own little zone practicing away well these two were chatting to each other like they were down the pub it, <laughs> it was like a normal sunday sunday lunchtime for them it was yeah. so and he's like stewart's down the shot he's like yeah so fancy game of golf on tuesday then mark mark's like yeah, yeah can do yeah quite fancy that. yeah and they were just they were just chatting away back and forth as they're practicing and i'm watching them thinking this is really weird because they're going out to play in the english open final and there's a lot of yeah. money and it's Mark's first of a ranking event final. And yeah, it was so weird because it was so natural. They were just chatting yeah. as they would on a Sunday lunchtime. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah, no, they're, they're, that was a, a fantastic final. Obviously, the, the first few frames, it was so tight. So we were lucky enough to be there for the whole day. Okay. And uh, it was just, I think it was like 40 minute average uh, frames, wasn't it, for like the first first session. So it did, did drag on, but it was a, it a good, good <laughs> final. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was great though. It's it's really funny. One thing it's just reminded me actually about Crawley. We, one thing that again people don't see, World Snooker Tour often they'll invite local schools um, and yeah. events. And one of my jobs is to show the kids round. Oh wow. We'll have we'll have kids from local schools. Um we had a school for the deaf come to Preston. Um that was I think was, I think that was the year that Ronnie did his thousandth century, I think so. But People don't, again, people don't really see that, but that's great. Yeah. One of my favourite parts of the job, really, because you, you take them around. The players, as a rule, the vast majority of them are absolutely brilliant. So I know that I can, if I take them up into the practice room, the players yeah. will have a turn, they'll stop for pictures and that kind of thing. And obviously, at the moment, we're missing that. You know, that's, yeah. that's there. But, you know, there's been some great times. Mark Williams, I mean, what, what a guy Mark is. Yeah. You know, we all know about Mark and his naked press conference and everything else. <laughs> Bab eating antics and all that, but I took a school into a practice room. Um, I can't think which tournament it was at, but we went in. I said to the kids on the way, and I said, "Look, just you've got to be totally silent in here because this is where the, the players practice, and we can go in there, but we've, we've got to really, really not say anything." We went in. There was only Mark there, and he, he played a shot, and he dipped down underneath the light of the table, and he says, uh, "All right." I said, uh, "Boys and girls, Mark Williams is um, at the time two-time." champion of the world and he goes come on come on and he got them all to play a shot he, he literally let each one of them play a shot with his cue and he's showing them how to do it and everything else and to those kids that was amazing yeah you know, it absolutely it made their day it was fantastic and it's great to be able to do things like that and like i say we're, we're missing that at the moment but it'll come back it'll come back soon enough yeah definitely We've got one uh, one question that come in um, through our, our Facebook page, and it's from Chris Gaynor, and he's put, "If you could talk to your younger self and give yourself some advice, what would you say?" <laughs> Try harder at school. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that, that's it, really. Um, yeah. yeah, try harder at school. Get into announcing younger and try harder at school. Um, yeah, I, I, I messed about too much at school. I. I wasn't that interested. I've done all right, yeah. but you know. Um, but that said, yeah, everything I've done has got me where I am now. So yeah. I can't change anything. I used to. I used to be a really big guy. I was twenty-five stone at one point. Wow. Uh, you know, I lost. I lost ten stone in a year about five years ago. So probably don't get fat. Yeah. <laughs> don't get fat, Phil. Eat the right things. Drink the right things, and and train. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, probably that actually. Yeah, don't yeah. don't eat like a pig, Phil. Was probably... 
Um, I've just seen a comment on there, Ryan Swain, are you from York? Yes, I am from York, yeah. Very proudly from York. Still live in York now. Always have done. Love it. Absolutely love the place. Perfect. Well, uh, just wanted to finish on uh, hopefully something really good. It's uh, what's been the most difficult person to interview, whether that's boxing or snooker, who's been the most difficult to interview? Ooh, difficult. Ronnie, Ronnie can be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair to say um, he can at times be a challenge. Um, I don't want to say he's difficult though, because he's he always he always gives you answers. But um, yeah. you know he, he can he can be a challenge. You see it in the interviews. Like I say, he did the Australian thing, everything else. Yeah. I got I got on great with him, but um, he can be a challenge at times. Um, I think that the most difficult interview I've ever done was a was a, a friend of mine called called Jimmy Harrington, who's a boxing trainer. Yeah. Um, up near Doncaster, and I've I've known Jimmy for years. And there was a a lad over in Manchester who, a, a young, promising amateur boxer, um, who ended his own life. And I I put something on Twitter about how how tragic it was. And I said, you know, mental health in boxing needs to be addressed. Yeah. And he sent me a text, and he, he said, Phyllis, do you know about the problems I've had? And I said, No, not really. And we you know, we got talking and he said, what I'd love is for you to interview me. He said, I wouldn't do it with anyone else. He said, but I'd love you to interview me about what's gone on in my life. Yeah. And he didn't tell me that much. And we did, it was when I was, when I still had the radio show and we did a, an interview on, on camera. Um, and it was, it was quite harrowing. It was, it was quite a, a tough, sorry, I'm bringing this right down. Yeah. Right? It was quite a tough interview. He, he, he tried to kill himself twice. Wow. He'd been locked up. He'd been sectioned. He'd, you know, there was all sorts of things that had gone on in his life. And I, I didn't know about more than half of this stuff. Yeah. And, and nor did anyone else. But he literally wanted to, to, to get this out to try and help other people, you know, slipping into the same kind of situation. And um, it was, there was a, a woman who was filming it on the camera. And she was stood behind the camera in tears. Wow. Watching this interview. And he said afterwards that he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have wanted to do that interview with anyone else purely because I know him and I'm his friend. So he knew that I would, I would treat it the way it should be treated. Yeah. Um, so as far as difficult interviews go, that, that's far and away the, certainly the most challenging because I was, I'll talk about snooker, boxing, rugby yeah. all day long. Um, start going on to mental health, particularly of a friend, and it's, it's a different ball game. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was tough, but, you know, a, a lot of people that I respect, and broadcasters that I respect a lot, mm. saw you and came back and said, look, that was, that was really, really good. Yeah. Really cool. So if, that, if one person saw that and, and it helped in some way, you know, well worth it. Yeah, and no, I definitely will. I'm a big advocate for supporting with like, mental health, and we've got an upcoming raffle uh, to raise money for the uh, Frank Bruno Foundation, <laughs> which obviously supports with you know mental health-related issues there. Um, and we've actually got um, a behind-the-scenes interview that we're going to be doing and then releasing um, later on in, in December with a young kid that has now got into boxing He's come through the care system and, and has really, you know, suffered as a result of that, but it's really turned his life around. Uh, so it, you know, it's going to be, you know, a really interesting interview coming up. And obviously we'll continue to to try and, you know, on the sideline support with regards to mental health, because I think sport is a, is a great platform to really make people aware because, you know, I think they just think these athletes just turn up and, and everything's fine. But behind closed doors, it's not always the case. So. Yeah. Can be a totally different story, but he's, I think it's Frank Thirty today, actually. So I yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it is, and uh, it's important that, that some of these guys speak out. And I think that was what Jimmy was trying to do when I interviewed him that day. And you know, like I say, it was tough. It was harrowing for, for me, certainly, and yeah. God, for him. Um, but it was it was really important. I think he shone a real light on things, so it was yeah. it was great. And you know, I think there's there's much greater awareness now of, of that kind of thing. And definitely. It, uh, as they should be so it's good yeah no definitely well I'd like to thank you for your time um, yeah, no. very very busy you know with everything it's just being crammed into the tail end of the year 
I wish you all the best for the end of the week at the Northern Ireland Open and uh, we'll look forward to that that boxing event as well coming up. Yeah, no trouble at all. Yeah, Northern Ireland Open, Eurosport, it's on now, but I'll be there from Friday. So get Love. watching. Perfect. Thank you very much Good. for your time. See you all later. Thank you. Bye.